First of all, I wanted to wish on the club's behalf, uh, everybody, a Merry Christmas, New Year's, what do they say, uh, holidays, hopefully that covers everything. Yeah. And then the next thing I'd like to do is thank all our officers and people that, get, that do everything for us. Sarah, with the VP, with their wonderful programs this year, and they were outstanding. Yes. Made all our lives easy. Phil, you're the, you're the new money man. We don't have the money bitch anymore. You did an outstanding job. And Jim, as the secretary and the head Zoomer, Zoomer, you did an outstanding job too. I really appreciate that. You all made us all look good. Also to uh, uh, the observatory director, Mark, who's always out there cleaning and uh, keeping <clears throat> things running, even though he's he does a heck of a job, and uh, I, I, I want to express to him from the club, uh, you're, you're a very valuable person. Thank you. So, Thank you. I'm hoping we can do some star parties sometime next year. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then maybe we can have, you know, depending on how the virus and the vaccine's going, we might get lucky and have the Christmas party hopefully again at the end of next year. So mm -hmm. we can... We can all think about that, I guess. Hopefully, it'll it'll come. We just have to wade through all this. Um, so, do we have any visitors still here tonight that are not members or new members that would like to introduce themselves? I don't see any. All regulars okay. tonight. Oh, so it's the, the, the same old crowd. That's good. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, any star reports or observatory reports well, before we get started? I have one. <laughs> um, finally was able to get a chance to see um, a series of Starlink satellites um, from, oh, yeah. a, I believe it was the November 25th launch. So there, I counted probably about 45. Wow. And was able to get a few neighbors together to try to spot them. And then um, a few nights ago, uh, some of my neighbors have never seen the um, space station fly over, so I got to show them that. And right. then also got my binoculars out to observe Jupiter and Saturn. And, you know, they're both in um, view of, of, uh, of the binocular lenses so that's about it I thought the Starlink passes were pretty incredible just seeing them going one after another I think they were at, um I think they were at minus two magnitude so they were pretty bright and surprising did you, did you wait until they get oh, go ahead. wait until they get 30,000 of them up yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I know they're kind of a nuisance to um everyone photography um but i think that you know the benefit the reason they're out there is, is a benefit to mankind as far as getting internet to the world but yeah it was pretty fascinating to see those uh, and then I'll, share that with my neighbors. I'll forward a picture i took with my cell phone of that satellite release uh, it showed it shows the actual rocket leading uh by about uh, 10 degrees or so but I'll, I'll submit that to the club. Somebody can do something with it. That was the debris, the Falcon debris or? Uh, no, no. That was the actual satellites uh, chasing the rocket across the sky. That, and it was amazing. I'm not sure if it was 25th. I'll have to look at it. But what you saw your bare eye was able to be uh, taken with a cell phone because I wasn't fat. I, this was a spontaneous observation, not a planned observation. Uh, we were out drinking by a fireplace, uh, so it had nothing to do with astronomy, but it was rather weird not knowing that that was coming and uh, had to document it somehow. So I'll send, I'll send that picture along because it it's, it's a rather good picture for a cell phone. I, I'd love to see that. Yeah, so those yeah. are the best kinds of observations, the, the ones where you just don't even expect it. But, you know, you're always looking up. So. <clears throat> Uh, anybody they, else? They'll, they'll publish it nationwide, worldwide. What was that, Dick? 
said he's send it to APOD, Astronomy Picture of the Day. Oh, yeah. It, uh, worldwide. Good idea. All right. Uh, any other before we move along? Yeah, just a, just a quick update uh, from me. Uh, I've been out quite a bit looking at the moon. Uh, we had, up until the last uh, 10 days or so, we've actually had some pretty good weather. Uh, and so got a lot of uh, good looks at the moon with uh, binoculars, um, with my five inch, uh, and even had my trusty 10 inch out uh, one time. Uh, Mars and it's getting small, but uh, we had a new moon. So we're on the, uh, a new cycle now. So if uh, you want to do any lunar observing uh, within the next few days, we'll be able to start seeing a crescent. So it's uh, it's been a pretty productive month. Good. Two great reports. We nice Christmas that. period there, Joe. Well, you know, uh, I see Santa Claus to uh, to my left, so <laughs> I figured I could, uh, I could be one of the reindeers. I also have my buddy here as well. I don't know if everyone saw a uh, dancer drop by to say hello, and he's going to keep an eye on the proceedings tonight. Uh, well, I guess we better be on our best behavior. Or he'll turn yeah. us into Santa Claus. He'll report right back in if you're naughty. <laughs> <Like me. laughs> All right. Uh, well, if has anybody got anything we want to um, bring up before we go to the program? I think we have an excellent program tonight, as usual. Any, anything else? Crickets? All right. Uh, um, I think it was, Sarah, was it Jean yep. we turned Jean. it over to? All right, uh, Jean, you're thank on. Thank you. And uh, uh, I'd like to uh, um, um, just give um, um, a, a sort of a preamble to uh, these awards. Uh, when uh, I thought I, I envisioned these awards uh, to be a, uh, a, a dual purpose. First of all, to, to recognize uh, the club members uh, who have done uh, outstanding work for the society over the years, but also as a, a promotion uh, that uh, would help to make the public aware. Uh, and uh, so the, uh, the Chris Highland Award, uh, I envision should be for, for a uh, uh, club member. Um, the B.J. Harper Award uh, would be for someone in the community. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for this year, which is the inaugural year for the V.J. Harper Award, first time it's been given, um, we were not able to conduct a, uh, uh, a program for the public because of, of the COVID-19 protocol. So uh, we searched in, uh, in the club and yet found someone uh, who has a history of outreach uh, and, uh, and that uh, uh, was, uh, uh, I think, uh, appropriate that, uh, that we chose Dick Evans. The, uh, the choice was uh, un unman unanimous with the board for that, and uh, uh, so I'm going to start with the Chris uh, uh, Highland Award, and uh, um, I have uh, a few pictures to show you. Uh, uh, Phil Hudson came with uh, with uh, Julie and myself. Uh, to present the award to Dick, and uh, and that would be at his home, and so we were able to have Marty in there too. I'm going to show you uh, on my 
share a screen here. Um, let me pick this up. And we have, I think this is the image I want. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, we, um, we don't have an image yet, Gene. Okay, I know. I'm, I have to pick it up. All right, okay. sorry about that. Um, and here's the way I'm gonna do it. Okay, two. Let's see. Uh, I went to, a sh we go to share screen again. <laughs> Sharing is paused. Bring your shared window to the front. Uh, well, I haven't done that. Hang on a minute. Is this another sump pump problem? <laughs> oh, resume share. I'm sorry. <laughs> It says I have to bring that to the front. Uh, I mean, well, let's see who share. What did, what did you do before, Gene? When you I'm trying to go to, uh, I think I may I, I think I may have to open the image. Yeah, hang on a minute. Okay, uh, before I go to the, these photos, I think I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna pick up the video. That I knew, know how to do. Uh, let's do that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that is showing to everybody. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Julie. Yes, sir. Jean. Phil. Members of the Fort Wayne Astronomical Society, I thank you very much. This is totally unexpected, but I am quite honored to receive this award. Perhaps if we scrounge around that creaky old dustbin for my fading memories, we might shed some light on why me. So I'm going to reminisce a little bit. I joined the Fort Wayne Astronomical Society in 1970. Oh my God, that's 50 years ago. From the earliest days, I was having so much fun that I wanted to spread the little I knew about astronomy to anyone who would listen. I still do. You ask my wife, Marty, and she'll tell you that when I'm talking astronomy, I have no idea when it's time to shut up and give it a rest. <laughs> For many years, I taught astronomy to roughly 15 elementary school kids. Some of them with their parents. the part of the uh, Lutheran Summer Institute in which uh, unpaid volunteers taught a variety of expert subjects. My subject was astronomy. We would spend an hour in the classroom followed by an hour in the parking lot with my, eight by, my 10 by 50 binoculars and my C8 telescope. The Blackbird Lifers, Great Pyramid, 
when he got too old to get it into and out of his VW Beetle. I didn't understand that. I sure do now. Trading memories. Was it was it two sessions a week or three? I can't remember. I believe that Robert Miller was one of my students. He is now a senior research associate <coughs> emeritus in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Michigan State University. I guess some of my enthusiasm rubbed off. I was a part of many star parties for various schools and other organizations in Northern Indiana. <laughs> As you know, we have shown some of the astronomical wonders to many thousands of kids. And without us, some of them might never even look One time, I had FWAS out to my house to uh, 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 conduct a star party for the seventh and eighth grade from Emmaus Lutheran School. When you get an eighth grader to say, ooh, you know you've really done something. I was a substitute teacher for Dr. Dyback Chattery at IPFW when he went to Italy to present a paper. And on one occasion, I, uh, I set up my CA telescope outside Kepler Hall and Dr. Chattery brought his class out to observe solar prominences. My H alpha filter was temperature dependent and it had its own heating element. Did that use 110 volts or 12 volts? More fading memories. Oh well. In 1980, in the 1980s, I discovered the Evans asterism. And a few years ago at McDonald Observatory, at a, a, a McDonald Observatory star party, I uh, showed it to some members of the San Antonio Astronomical Society who were there with telescopes helping out. It turned out that one of them, as I read it in the Sky and Telescope, one of them, uh, um, named it Stargate. That's a great name for it. <clears throat> Here in Fort Wayne, it is still the Evans asterism. <laughs> <clears throat> Since 2008, I have developed some 14 PowerPoint programs designed to uh, pass on astronomical information to various people, first in FWAS, then elsewhere. Now, you know, I think these programs can probably be squeezed into the teaching category also. Uh, not all of them are good. Uh, some of the early ones I think are rather crummy. I haven't gone back to try to uh, uh, upgrade them, not yet anyway. And in spite of all that, I have passed on, I've given copies to members of the McDonald Observatory Board of Visitors. Um, they're a support group for the observatory. And they are active in making astronomical resources 
available to the entire Texas school system. So you never know where some of those PowerPoint programs might wind up. I might mention that my fifth star hopping uh, program is ready to present. But I am waiting for in-person FWAS meetings to start again. I'm very anxious. that pursuing my hobby, fortunate, <laughs> I am honored, and I thank you very much. This B.J. Harper Award will add to the enjoyment I have had from studying astronomy all these years with the Fort Wayne Astronomical Society. Again, thank you. Congratulations. Group, uh, I have to add, uh, when I was thinking about why me, I forgot all about an activity I did most often. Whenever we had a crowd, I would pull out my pointer and start talking about what's in the sky. Constellations, stories about stars, clusters, nebulae, and whatever else I could see. That's something I really should not have forgotten about. That's it. Okay, I'm gonna, I think I wanna get a picture that, uh, here we go. Okay, let's do a screen share. Yeah, we got it. And I think you'll see that this is uh, this is the uh, the award uh, as it's lit and operating. <clears throat> uh, Interesting design. Uh, yeah, I could discuss that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I wanted. Um, what caught my fancy, uh, we're talking back in uh, 2009, 2010, um, I uh, was down visiting uh, my family members down in North Carolina, visited Old Salem. Uh, uh, my granddaughter was going to Salem College and they had these stars as Christmas tree ornaments. They're 20 point stars called a Moravian star. And they were set so that, such that you could stick a Christmas tree light up inside and it would light up. And I thought I'd like to have something like that uh, to give as an award. Uh, the uh, the tower that you see there was uh, conceived by my granddaughter. She said, um, that's the star's 20 points. Why don't you make that uh, base of the pyramid there uh, a 10 point star? Uh, that leaves you a lot of room inside that you can run some innards if you need to. So uh, that's, uh, the way the design came about. The bottom uh, I left uh, to uh, the imaginations of some people who turned out to be craftsmen. Uh, Peter Hess, I think, uh, working with wood. And there's a placard on it, then 
that uh, describes the award, the recipient, and the date. Uh, and then for the lighting of it, uh, Geddes Menesiakis uh, put his mind to it, and it has uh, multiple lights, uh, LEDs, that work on separate timers uh, so that they uh, run uh, almost asynchronously uh, and create a, a, a rainbow pattern of colors uh, that uh, is sort of like a pseudo random uh, generator uh, that uh, creates uh, varying colors. So uh, it's got a switch on the bottom and takes two AA batteries. Uh, and uh, I've just replaced the batteries in mine. Uh, so uh, uh, they lasted a pretty good while, a year. I, I ran it quite a bit this past year. Um, so uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, the people who worked in this area, it was led by Michael Pulse, but uh, everybody uh, jumps in on it mm -hmm. and, uh, and worked on it. And I wanted to have a mass produced so we'd have some standing by. I've got 20 stars. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we've got 10 years worth, but um, uh, we haven't been to that yet. I'm thankful that we were able to get these trophies uh, and these towers are of different colors. They're made by a uh, uh, 3D printer and, uh, and so you, you can select the materials. Uh, okay. Um, it's a very elegant award. I'm proud to have it. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we couldn't, uh, interesting thing, um, I had asked B.J. Harper to, or, or Sarah Harper, B.J.'s <laughs> daughter. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Pretty hard to ask uh, I, Yeah, <laughs> I, I asked B, uh, Sarah Harper to, to lead uh, the group or set up a program that would uh, uh, wind up with a contest for the public. And we just had to put that on hold. There was no way we could do it. But uh, she said, you know, uh, I, was, I was thinking of Dick Evans the whole time we were looking at the awards uh, for this award. So uh, I think you're a fitting recipient, Dick. And uh, I and, agree 100%, Mrs. Yeah. Sarah. Yes, thank you. Now, uh, for those uh, members who are new, uh, I asked Sarah um, to give me a, a uh, just a quick synopsis of BJ and why we named a reward in her name and why her picture is uh, on the east, in the east wing of the observatory. Um, and she wrote this, Betty Jo Harper, Star Lady BJ, taught science at Northrop High School from 1985 to 2006. The highlights of her teaching career were the 12 years, 1994 through 2006, she taught astronomy and served as the Northrop High School planetarium director. Starlight VJ was a passionate teacher who loved to present uh, night sky shows for elementary, middle school, and adult groups during her planning periods and after school. She loved sharing her knowledge with others, oftentimes on clear nights with her laser pointer and the naked eye. She also served as a solar ambassador for the NASA uh, um, 
Jet Propulsion Laboratory and was an active member of the Fort Wayne Astronomical Society for 20 years from 1994 through 2014, the year that she passed away. So uh, this uh, I'm going to be putting in a pre press release, which I'm going to be uh, creating and sending out this week uh, to uh, to the media uh, about this award. And I'm going to stop share. And uh, and uh, I think I would like to move on to the next award, which is the Chris Highland Award, awarded to Phil Hudson. Um, I do have, let me double check here. I like this, I like this picture. Here we go. Yes. Nice uh, picture. Nice picture. Yeah. I, uh, Phil, I have to say, you do scrub up pretty nicely. Let that go to your head, Phil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> when you choose me. And, uh, it's, it's fitting that, uh, uh, that Joy is there with him, too, because um, I know that she uh, uh, it gives him support uh, in this uh, in this hobby, uh, and I I've got some questions to ask uh, to ask you, Phil. Um, let me undo the share. Uh, I think I've I've primed you, but uh, I know uh, uh, Bob Hope. Uh, uh, received uh, the Congressional Gold Medal uh, and his remarks on that were, uh, I feel very humble, but I think I have the strength of character to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> my, my word, my thinking exactly. <laughs> I thought you might like that. Uh, but I've got some um, uh, misplaced uh, some of my notes here. Oh, here it is on the floor. Um, you've been a member of the society uh, a long time, almost as long as I have. Uh, I joined in in uh, 1966. When did you join? Um, I joined the same year Dick did, and it was uh, 50 years ago in 1970. And uh, I think uh, Dick and I have been, uh, I've been following him either very parallel or perpendicular, one of the two, uh, for 50 years. We've been uh, well, you've kind of on the... You've He's been teaching me together. right along too. <laughs> You've done some things together. Uh, oh yeah, you and Dick. Yeah, um, really. Yeah. I think uh, he took you to McDonald Observatory. Yeah, McDonald Observatory. Uh, I was uh, uh, lucky enough to uh, uh, kind of uh, chaperone him <laughs> to uh, a couple <laughs> meetings at the at the observatory, and then uh, we. We went, uh, what was there, six of us, wasn't there, Gene? Because you were in on it, too. Yes. We rented, yeah. we, we rented the 82-inch uh, for a night. Yeah. And I think there were six of us from the club. Joe Novosel, who is, uh, is on here now, you know, he was yeah. one of them. Joe was the only one that had a sense enough to bring a camera along. <laughs> and try. The rest of us were eyeballing it. Uh, well, we had a, uh, Dick had made a really aggressive um, 
uh, observation list for that night. We had about 10 minutes per object, and we kept that, uh, he kept that uh, telescope operator busy on an 82 inch moving around. But Yeah, well, it, uh, Dick never does anything halfway. No, no. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, that's just, that's just one of the memories, you know, I mean, uh, there's so many with the club that uh, everybody's been, you know, to get an award for something like he says that you like to do is really, uh, hmm. is really fun. Hmm. Uh, and well, I do have mine here. I'm going to just show uh, really some close up. I uh, uh, it. it is, what's cool about it is really made by the club. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. and the, the woodwork that Pete did, and uh, the work that, and he even did the base on on these two awards, and uh, and everything works really neat too. It it's really well, turn, a, it a, a so turn it on. Turn it on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's out red. Oh. Wonderful. Then it's it, very cool. Then it turns and green, then it turns gross, gold. It, it does. Uh, what else? I'm looking at my screen and the blue looks, uh, the green looks blue. It's really green right, right now, really super green. So it's uh, probably overexposing a little bit. But yeah, it's really, really cool how it Isn't that fantastic? goes through the, yeah. the, the colors. Yeah. You can thank Geddes for that. Yeah. Now, now, something I need to point out is the longer you leave it on, uh, because I've got multiple LEDs in there, yeah, it will slowly go out of sync, and it won't just be always green or red or blue. You'll start getting a mix of those two colors, and so then it turns into an infinite, kind of like a rainbow effect of different colors. So the longer it stays on, the more fascinating it gets so and, and also Phil I, I wanted to mention that picture of you that looks so good don't let any you know we you can't fool everybody here that was all done in Photoshop <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm working on the hair <laughs> <laughs> now uh, Phil uh, what offices have you held? Um, you know, I I believe I was I've been on the board for fifty years. Uh, yeah. Can you believe that? Uh, talk about uh, uh, an old uh, politician or something. <laughs> I've held. I've been president. I've been secretary. I've been treasurer a couple times, and uh, I think I was president once and then got kicked off. And that was that was pretty much it. <laughs> That's why we need term limits. That's why we you, you, you were yeah. <laughs> That's all they could put up with me. So I, I, uh, but I've been on the board for, uh, I think, um, most of the 50 years that I can recall, you know, so. Well, I do know one thing. Uh, uh, you know, we started the StarQuest uh, project back in 2006 uh, when we were looking at ways to improve the society. And that was done at the suggestion um, of, uh, um, who, help me out. Um, um, with the, It'll come to me. Anyway, uh, uh, the, the gentleman who thought up uh, the name StarQuest. Um, oh, Greg Jacob. Greg. Yeah, Greg. Yeah. Greg Jacob. Um, and uh, uh, I uh, had some skills as a project manager learned at Magnavox, so uh, I put them to use, and that's where we came up uh, with uh, the organization and the idea of the StarQuest project, uh, dubbed myself 
the uh, project leader, uh, with the operation of the project in a formal manner, we were able to um, design, develop, uh, and, uh, and and go to the public uh, with uh, the observatory and get it built. But I noticed uh, with that project, we select tasks to do and then have a task leader work on. Uh, I don't know of any task group that you were not a part of. You joined <laughs> just about every, everything. Uh, uh, and also I noticed that when the club is out uh, doing things like going for the public, uh, operating a booth or uh, doing something for public outreach, um, you were there. So uh, I guess right now you're hanging in there with uh, uh, the spectrograph people uh, trying to help them figure out how to make that spectrograph work. Uh, so uh, but it's just uh, a lot of uh, hanging have, on shirt tails. <laughs> yeah, well, you have your own skills. Uh, well, um, I've noticed uh, you you crafted the signs. Uh, that we have that uh, the sign that's uh, lit up and glowing in the observatory, and uh, um, the header for the eyepiece. Uh, so, what was your vocation? Well, in, I grew up in the uh, uh, graphic design business, so um, the computer and graphics and signs and uh, uh, all editorial layout was always a big part of what I did professionally, and uh, and it kind of it related to a lot of things that we were doing, you know, for the for the club. So it. It was a, kind of a natural thing for me to not participate in something that uh, I, I guess I kind of had um, more of the graphic experience. I wasn't a very good writer, <laughs> but, uh, but I could put the elements together, it seemed like. I mean, and uh, the society certainly had a lot of neat, cool elements to work with, still does. So. Well, now uh, you're doing some uh, astrophotography now, I know. And I think Geddes can attest that you're a fast learner. Would you agree with that, Geddes? Absolutely, absolutely. Phil is right up there. Um, he's taken some really, really amazing images and his processing skills are, are second to none. He likes red. Well, thank you. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I wonder quite a bit about that. <laughs> so, uh, oh, through the years, uh, how much time do you figure you would have you spent uh, in uh, the society um, endeavors? Yeah. Boy, I don't know. Um, it's uh, always enjoyable time, so it's hard to uh, kind of put a uh, an hour or percentage of your time put in. Uh, but it's always been uh, the best time, you know. I mean, it's a, a fun time when you're uh, doing something like, you know, you got a hobby that you like. So it's quite a bit of time, but it's not, uh, it's, it's very fun time. I mean, it's like playing hard. <laughs> well, you know, I think so. uh, I can uh, I can say that uh, the society for me has been a great place to make friends. And uh, I think as we each pursue our interests uh, and learn and help one another in this endeavor and at the same time promote astronomy 
to the public and their awareness. Uh, I think uh, uh, this has just been a great organization to do that with. So uh, I think uh, uh, the board uh, was unanimous again in choosing you for this award. And uh, I think uh, we're gonna uh, have to put our caps on and search for the award uh, uh, recipients for next year. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, do you have any other remarks that you would like to say? Um, gee, no, just that I really appreciate the award. It is, um, you know, Chris Hyland was uh, definitely a person that uh, impressed me right off. Uh, I know he joined maybe uh, when we moved, um, you know, uh, Dick and I have been through uh, from, you know, three observatories yeah. through, through the club. And, uh, and Chris Hyland came out when we were at Fox Island. And uh, I remember him uh, with a little computer that was, uh, I think, a Bomar computer, a little hand computer that... Uh, he got somehow, and he could convert uh, right ascension and declination to azimuth and altitude, and uh, that really impressed me for a newbie coming in there and then saying, would you like to see the Veil Nebula <laughs> in an 80 millimeter? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, Chris was really a... Uh, uh, an interesting person to uh, to be around. He, he was very intelligent, and uh, he would, uh, if he didn't know something about something, he would, a week later, he would be an expert at it. So he was really an educated guy that uh, really I was impressed with, well, along with, you know, Glenn Harnish figure, who put the scope together, you know, and I wasn't there when they put the scope together, but I knew Glenn when we moved to Fox Island and certainly uh, yourself, Gene, was a part of all our moves. And so, yes. you know, um, yeah, you there was right, a, right a in period, there. So. There was a period when uh, uh, I was with uh, the Boy Scouts when my uh, two boys were of age. Uh, that I spent more time there, but then uh, quickly picked this back up. Yeah, so, so no, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the award and I thank the board and the members of the club and uh, look forward to another 50 years. Yeah, I'm good for that. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. And I will be uh, creating pr press release uh, and uh, uh, Julie, I'll be uh, probably passing that under your nose before uh, we send it out, but uh, we're going to be sending it out to uh, all the media. And uh, so in that case, uh, Dick and uh, Phil, don't be surprised if some people want to come and interview you and talk to you about it. So, um, virtually on return control to Julie. Okay, that's a tough act to follow there. <laughs> I, I was trying to remember when I joined. I think I first came to Fort Wayne about 2002, so it was after in the uh, maybe a year or two after that. So, uh huh. And uh, that's where I met all you crazy people. And, uh, and went in that little dome that used to spin around. I enjoyed that. So it's it's been great uh, being with uh, you, Dean, Dick, everybody else. It's been fantastic. So um, I guess that's the program. That's the meeting. Anybody else uh, open mic? Want to say anything or got anything else? I'm just glad that we don't have to stand in the doorway anymore when the when the uh, observatory would have to go around 
<laughs> when you had to stand there with, when it hit west or something. I'm just glad we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> I used to oh, never I know where I was going to exit to into because the door right. was moving all the time. You can thank uh, Chris Hyland for that. Um, the current observatory uh, is pretty much his baby. He and uh, uh, I, I think uh, he was part of the engineering group and uh, I used his uh, user inputs and uh, um, we just, uh, he and Greg Jacobs, um, you would, I think, sit and mull things over together and then uh, uh, I picked those up and uh, and make sure they got into the design. And we designed the open uh, observatory because of the limitations that a dome puts on you. When, you, when you're in the dome, you, you didn't know what was going out. You know, and, and then in that particular dome, you didn't know which way you were gonna go out, you know, which way you'd be facing when you went out the door. Uh, <clears throat> I don't miss the hand crank to open and close the slit either. <laughs> no, that, that was calisthenics. How, how many Good. how many cranks was that? Chris always knew how many cranks that was. <laughs> 152 or something. It was quite a few. I don't remember. Sometimes it gets stuck too, so that was always fun. Yeah, then Chris would go up and rework the wiring. Yeah. Put put them all back on the pulleys. Yeah. Well, um, well I, I just wanted to uh, take a moment to uh, as, uh, thank Dick for having uh, the, the courage to invite us, invite the club down to uh, Fort Davis for that trip in 2006. That was uh, quite an amazing trip, really a highlight of, uh, of my uh, astronomy career, if you will, uh, being able to go down there. The amazing views we had through the 82-inch uh, the uh, telescope. Uh, the optics were just hard to believe how good they really are. Uh, I recall us having the, uh, the telescope up to like 1,200 power, and, uh, and the images of the stars we were looking at were just tack sharp. But in and addition- The other thing too, uh, and if people might not uh, realize, let's talk about field of view. The field of view on something that large with that kind of power is tiny. We investigated the hearts of globular clusters. Yes, yes. You can see, you can see black velvet around the stars. In fact, you can see right through M13. Yeah, absolutely. Some of the professional astronomers there at McDonald Observatory say that the optics on that 82 inch are among the very best in the whole world. I can agree with that from uh, my limited experience. But yeah. I wanted to say too that all the people that we, uh, that we met, uh, we stayed at the uh, astronomers' quarters uh, on site there. Uh, uh, and everybody that we met was really, uh, really friendly, very helpful. We had the run of the place uh, largely and uh, uh, it was just a real joy to be there. So Dick, thank you very much uh, for allowing me to come along. It was, it was quite a trip and uh, I really appreciate the fact that uh, you were able to, to get us down there and, uh, and the really good time uh, that I had and I think all of us had uh, while we were down there. I drive back to uh, Midland, Odessa uh, the next day after we were done on the, uh, uh, the telescope. That was quite an adventurous uh, drive being uh, up for about 20, 25, 26, 27 hours at that point and then getting through security. What a, what a crazy uh, day that Sunday was. But anyway, Dick, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you know, I wanted to do it again, but I was afraid that we could never duplicate that trip, and I never had nerve enough to try <laughs> put another one together. Uh, I wish you would have. That would have been great to, to try to repeat that. You guys didn't stop at the uh, Meteor Crater and... Uh... Yes, we did. Okay. Oh, yeah. Odessa. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It's not as big as the one in Arizona, but it's still 
you know, there. Mm -hmm. You could run the video that uh, that was put together through the trip. That would be like two or three meetings. <laughs> it's a full hour. Anyway, thanks again. Uh, Julie, I'd like to share something I took at the observatory last Wednesday night, if I can. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you I can. Share the screen again here, but... Uh, uh, if you can't do it, put your picture up, Ed. Okay. I got another one. It might just be easier to have Pete do it. I'm trying to, th oh, desktop. No, I'm going to wind up like uh, <laughs> like we did before. Go ahead, Pete. <laughs> what, if you have it, you need to open it in your app, whatever you have, um, and, and then select yeah. it. Uh, it comes up all different stuff, and I've never uh, done that, so I don't want to waste people's time there. But that's right, so. Yeah, I did fumble. Anyways, uh, last uh, Wednesday night, it was pretty clear that front came through there, and I was kind of surprised at the observatory, how good the skies were, especially compared to where I live here. I'm up on the north edge of uh, Fort Wayne, and um, I can't see this nebulosity. Uh, but, but when I go down to the observatory, and I'd be interested, does anybody know, is there, what do you use to measure portal numbers or whatever? Is there a device? Can you see that? No, not yet. Oh, what happened? Well. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Let me try again here. But anyway. That? Interesting to know the difference in the, uh, the uh, we got good skies there, it is, yeah. This looks nice. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to magnify it too much or, or whatever there, but uh, anyways, this is just my little doodad uh, sitting on a tripod um, with a hydrogen alpha filter, and it's 1x, and so you can see the entire Orion complex and the nebulosity there. There's also a, uh, I believe that's a, either a plane, probably a plane to the brightness or it might be a satellite. And then off to the left, I'm crowding the Orion to the right there. Off to the left is the uh, uh, Rosette Nebula in uh, Monoceros, the next constellation over. So mm -hmm. anyways, this is what you just, uh, I'm pretty impressed. I can just go out there at the observatory and just hold this up to my eye and see this. You see the nebulosity around the head of Orion. You also see Bernard's loop, which, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but it almost stretches the whole way around to uh, um, Rigel and then, of course, the other nebulosity there. So just want to point that out. It's kind of a, a quick observatory thing. And uh, that's just a, a straight up holding a, a camera up to it, an old point shoot camera, about two seconds, single exposure, two seconds. Very nice. So. Very impressive. Yeah, it is quite a gadget. Really that, cool. Uh, yeah, and I also picked up the California Nebula, too. Uh, I'd never seen it before. That's supposed to be such a hard target or whatever. And uh, and uh, when, when it, uh, I was kind of scanning the skies after I kind of took it apart again, I was looking there, and it's near the Pleiades. It's only about 15 degrees from the Pleiades. And uh, so I'm going to have to try to get that in there because it, it, it just still it must be a really strong emission nebula because that one sticks out always really, really bright. And uh, the rosette sticks out. And, of course, uh, North America Pelican. There's two in, in Cassiopeia that always uh, show up very well, too. So someday it'd be nice to go out west, perhaps like uh, uh, near down by El Paso or somewhere down McDonald's or like that, and see how much more you could get out west. Because, again, I don't know what our portal number is here, but um, it's, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty happy that when I'm getting through uh, the Indiana skies here, so... Uh, but I could, like say for my, uh, I must be this glow from the, uh, the subdivision here, the street lamp sort of, you don't notice it when you look straight up there. I mean, you're looking at Orion, you're thinking, okay, that's pretty clear. I ought to be able to see that. But then you hold it up there and that's just gets, apparently just gets washed out. So anyway, that's my little observing report. A good one. Very good. I had another shot here I wanted to show, but for some reason I'm having trouble with this now. Uh, just keeps wanting to go back to the same picture. And everything I do, it just... Huh. 
you have a link to it or are they files? Well, if I go to screen share, it shows photos. And before I showed heads, it showed all the photos I got on the iPad. Mm -hmm. And now when I hit photos, it just shows that same one. And when I hit the back arrow, it just it just goes back to that again. I, I don't know. Turn it off, turn it back on? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I do. Right. The only way. Fill it with concrete. So. <laughs> <laughs> Start using a PC. Concrete. <laughs> it fixes a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's try it again. Nope. Are we oh, it's, just like it's just like it's frozen on there and only those two pictures. Uh, I can show you Orion or here. Is that, are you guys seeing that? No. Watch it. No, you gotta, you gotta show the, the picture first on, on your device and once it's up and running on yours, then you select share your screen. Yeah, that's what I found. Oh, get uh, get it get it first on yours, Peter, so that you can see it. And well, then, I am. Well, I, I am, but it doesn't want to. Hmm. Doesn't want to do anything. Are you locked on share? Oh, there it goes. Yes. Can you guys see that now? Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. That was a shot I did of Orion the other night. Uh, I didn't want to overexpose it, so you can see some some of the dim arms of it. There's the running man to the right there. Yeah. Uh, trapezium. Yes, the trapezium is almost blown out there. Yeah. Uh, There's there. You can see it. And then I got another shot of the horse horse head, but I can't seem to. I can't seem to get any other choices now on my photos. Uh, I do have this shot that I did out of the two inch finder scope. And right in the middle, you can see the horse head. This is with the small black and white camera. You see the horse's head and then yeah. the flank nebula yes, yes. up there to the left. Uh, Or explain the three black dots too. Oh, those are those are just on the screen. I just don't understand why this thing will not go to any other photos now, though. Uh, go ahead and close your viewer and then start your viewer back up. You mean which viewer? Well, what what device are you using to see the images? On I'm just using my iPad. All right. So how, how does, you... it gives you choice of your photos. And when I first went to photos, it showed all of my photos on the iPad, okay. Now it will not, it will only show ones that I clicked earlier. And uh, nothing well, else, let's. Well, you know, when we fill the some pit with cement, we'll put your iPad and iPad in there. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing, the funny thing is this worked fine uh, that night I was showing the EAA uh, stuff. And so, who knows? Uh, <laughs> because I got a color picture of the horse that I really wanted to share, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do that. Uh, maybe Ed can share that from <laughs> the one I had you. Uh, I just learned something that you have to bring it up on your screen before you hit the share button. I did not know it. I hit the share button first or whatever like that, but I, I, I don't know where I'd chase that file. All right. You know, if you want, Peter, e email me the that picture and I'll, I'll, I'll try to share it here if you want. Well, no, I, I did send that to you. Uh, I know. I, I probably won't be able to find it anytime soon, but if you send it to me right now i I can pull it up. Uh, let me try that. And while we're waiting for that, Phil, why don't you go ahead and, and dance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
With modern technology, I'm running full tilt, trying to keep up. I keep slipping further and further behind. <laughs> okay, get this. You're muted, Gettys. Ah, uh, okay. I'm, there you are. I, I'm, I'm remoted into a different PC, checking my emails. I'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> okay, I've got it here. Hang on. Now that this is enhanced by Phil Hudson. Oh, nice. Great. Oh. oh yeah. That was about uh, 30 second exposures for about 10 minutes. Uh, Bill, do you have that in the gallery? Society's gallery? Uh, no. Okay. I don't. I haven't put anything on that for a while. Yeah, there's a, there are a couple of those. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm way behind on the images that have been coming out. But that's, that's, that's really a good shot for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's, it's exciting this. <laughs> Anybody else that's interested in doing this, I'd be willing to uh, uh, share the technology with you. Uh, Is it SharpCap that you're using, Pete? Yeah, which, which by the way, Ed, and Phil, I, I found a different stacking part of that SharpCap I was not even aware of that uh, does an averaging rather than uh, stacking so much and so it eliminates satellites and stuff that come through the image okay who that's yours get us that would be your three who's you posting your mic is i think that's get us is probably oh uh, by the way pete i saw something the other day it was on uh sharp cap um it was on the night vision thing on cloudy nights and they were talking about the uh, um, somebody's using their cell phone to take live views through the eyepiece um, and then using sharp to zoom have you oh. seen it? yeah so you can send it directly to a zoom meeting supposedly well that's that was my idea that if if we had the sharp cap on a computer you could uh, send that, whatever you're seeing on that computer directly to the, the Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I forget the thread number, but it was on uh, Cloudy Nights on the uh, night vision uh, thing there. Somebody talked about doing that, or they have done that apparently, so. Okay. Gettys, was that your image there you posted? Yeah, and I'm sorry, when I, when I remote, remote <coughs> into my other PC, I, I lose my mic ability on this laptop that I'm using, but no, that was a <coughs> picture by somebody who just started out in astro imaging. That shows you how quick he's come along. Uh, his name is Bill. He lives in Virginia, and he's part of our MOO group. Um, so he's he's just learning, and that's how far he's come along. It's a pretty f amazing uh, image what what he was able to do there. What, what is that object? Uh, that's uh, M33. Mm. Well. <clears throat> Weird. <laughs> yeah, Ed, uh, document that. Uh, information that you have so that that would be interesting to find out yeah i can't remember any other details in that thread but anyways it talked about doing that you know and it sounded like a really easy solution there's a california wow that's impressive yeah.
Mm -hmm. So about three degrees, I believe, the length of it. What scopes are you working with, Yetis? Okay, see if I'm back. There we go. <laughs> I got a... I got to get back out of the my remote PC and then come back to this laptop to get audio. Um, that was by one of the Fort Wayne Astronomical Society members, uh, Dave Thackeray, and um, he took that with um, uh, just uh, just last week. He took that. That's California Nebula. Um, I was kind of hoping Dave would be here uh, for the meeting, but uh, yeah, that was that was his image, and he took that with a with a small refractor. Okay. If you've got a good dark sky, M33 is naked eye. Mm -hmm. Just barely. I found that um, imaging California Nebula is uh, very challenging. Um, you, it, it, you would think it'd be an easy object, but it's um, it doesn't photograph easily. At least uh, my my attempts have I haven't gotten a very very good picture of it. It it takes a lot of a lot of uh, exposure time to to get a nice picture of it without much noise. And you got the right filter. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I've noticed, Gettys, is that uh, this camera I've been playing with, you, the filters don't seem to help you see anything additional. What they do is dim out the stars so you can mute the star effect. But the camera itself seems to be very sensitive in that uh, hydrogen alpha range. Uh, that red line, you know, that everybody's buying those, those hydrogen alpha filters now. Uh, which another good filter out is that Optolong now that they, they have both the hydrogen alpha and the oxygen three line that are visible. Yeah, I've got, um, I have that filter. Uh, matter of fact, uh, it's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. That exact, yeah, I've got the extreme version of it. So I, I'm very eager to, uh, to try it out. Were you able to get a two inch or just an inch and a quarter? Um, I was able to get a two inch, um, uh, OPT had ordered uh, 700 of them and, um, uh, they got an initial shipment of, um, uh, the 149 of them came in a couple of weeks ago and those got all shipped out immediately on, in one day. And wow. I was, I was a uh, ninth in line after that. I, I, I missed it by nine. So I had to wait for their next shipment to, to come in, which uh, came in, and then uh, they notified me that uh, they, they mailed it. So it, it should be coming in tomorrow. Kind of like your astrophysics experience. Uh, you ever get that, uh, what you order, a six-inch uh, scope or whatever? Uh, um, <laughs> mine? No. I, I, I've i been on the waiting list for an astrophysics uh, six-inch for – about 20 years now I've been on the waiting list. <laughs> yeah, your number ought to be coming up pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I've talked to Roland about that. Uh, there will never be another uh, six-inch astrophysics. So that, that's why a long, long time ago I bought the, the Tech 140-millimeter um, that I've got now. I understand. I had a question for Kent uh, before he runs off there. Kent, did you happen to notice on the cloudy nights on their forums there is a um, – the second from the bottom there, uh, you're in the, the uh, biological sciences there, they have a forum on microscopes. And it's quite interesting, the stuff that they had there uh, between yeah, I... microscopes and uh, triocular stereo things, whatever like that. And some of the techniques, they were showing, taking pictures of uh, rocks or something like that. And they take 10 different exposures and combine it all into Photoshop sh shop so they can get it into focus. Have you ever had any experience with that or recommendations? Um, not a lot of microscopy experience. I mean, that's kind of how I got into science, but um, I haven't done a lot of photography. 
Yeah. You ever try uh, jewel uh, loops? Um, a little bit. My brother did watchmaking for a number of years. And I played with them, but I uh, haven't really used them a lot. Um, I'm, I'm pretty fond of stereo dissecting microscope uh, if you want to look at really small stuff. They were, they were talking about Amscope. I don't know if you ever uh, used Amscope. Supposedly a good price comes off the same line as the uh, Olympus, Nikon, uh, Leica, and all that other stuff. Yeah, I'm not familiar with them. Okay. Whose image is that? Uh, that's uh, uh, what I took through uh, the club's um, a Starlock scope in October of 2017. This is M33. Uh, I think uh, if you compare this with, uh, uh, you can see that that 12 inch scope has, gives you a nice field of view for M33. But, uh, uh, but my treatment of the colors and it, uh, I think Geddes would agree, um, <laughs> could, uh, could use some work. Um, there are areas of this, uh, regions that are in red uh, because they are uh, nebulas that are creating stars, a lot like the Orion Nebula in our galaxy. And, uh, and here they're showing up as white blobs. So I don't know, Gaddis, maybe they are overexposed or I'm not sure. Anyway, I wasn't, at that time, I wasn't trying to treat uh, with, uh, I'm in Photoshop uh, and uh, I could probably have done a little better working with the levels of the RGB in order to bring this. I do see different star colors and you can tell that there's a region in this central part here that uh, is older because it's, uh, it's more in the yellowish color and in the bright new uh, stars out in the, uh, in the arms are showing bluish. Gene, what, um, yeah, I, I do remember this image of yours. It, it was, uh, actually, you're, you're, you're a very quick study, too. You, you've come a long way in a, in a very short amount of time. But, um, the, yeah, the areas that you're referring to that are not real obvious here are, are the hydrogen alpha regions. That's true. And there, there are a, a whole bunch of them that, that are missing here. But that's not any fault of yours. Uh, it, it has to do with the camera that you are using. It, yes, that it, was a Nikon D5500 and it had a, a, it has a filter in it. Right. It's so not the red. Right. So that, that that's not any fault of yours. Um, it's just not uh, sensitive to, to that wavelength. That's why the hydrogen alpha is, is missing. But your current camera uh, would do a much, much better job uh, recording uh, that wavelength. So if you were to reshoot this image and plus with the processing that you've learned since this image was taken, you see a, a pretty vast improvement. Okay, well, I'll look forward to that whenever uh, the uh, spectrograph guys can turn my, <laughs> turn that 12 inch loose. Uh, right now, we're pushing to get that spectrograph working. Gene, don't hold your breath. <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, spectrograph people, uh, uh, and I'm talking about uh, Julie and Peter and Phil, and uh, um, they're, uh, they're making progress. Good. We need to report back to the Fullinger 
uh, uh, foundation of what we have been able to do when we have something to report. You're definitely right about that. Yes. Yeah, I have that. Uh, in fact, when I, uh, uh, when I did the grant request for that, that I sent in, uh, I had uh, a uh, birth chart that was showing uh, uh, the, uh, what, what we were expecting to do with that. And one of the areas on it was that we would report back uh, our success in uh, working with, uh, uh, with the colleges on that. Uh, so we're struggling in that area, but we're, we're going to do that. Of course, they've got a new president now uh, in the Follinger Foundation leading it. Uh, the, the lady who was uh, the CEO of that is retired. But we gave her, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, a lifetime pass to come and look at the to the observatory anytime she wants to. Uh, as a result of uh, her giving us the money for that. It was good to see everybody. Nice to see you guys. Thanks. Good night. Uh, Stuart Pizza Hut. Oh, that closed. <laughs> uh, Northcrest closed. Happy holidays, and we'll see you again. They next deliver. Week. Merry Christmas, <laughs> not Northcrest. <laughs> by the way, good night. Good night. Good night. Everybody see that uh, 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 the uh, the killer asteroid that's going to hit us in nine years or come close to us? It was uh, Tom Horn, one of those end of time prophecy guys, was on the other night. I don't know if you guys ever heard him. Anyway, it's a uh, asteroid number nine 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 four two Apophis, which is uh, named after the Greek god of chaos. And it's supposed to come within 23,000, according to NASA, Friday, Oct uh, April 13th, 2029. So if their calculation is off, that's one tenth the distance to the moon. It's supposed to be third magnitude and moving 40 degrees an hour. So uh -oh, mark uh -oh. your calendars. Might be something to see. I'm planning uh -oh. on looking, watching it. <laughs> Drop it in China. I probably won't be here. Oh, come on now. Uh, Think positive. <laughs> <laughs> that is. I'm shooting for 100. Yeah. Now, now, if you get into the end of time prophecy stuff there, the guy backdated there. This is, uh, you, you may not care whatever like that. But three and a half years behind that exact date is the high feast day of uh, Rosh Hashanah or um, uh, trumpets. And uh, so it gets into all that stuff there. So some people are saying that's going to be the end of the, or the midpoint of the tribulation. The three and a half years. Point of tribulation. You know. So, so, so how, how big is this asteroid? Uh, Eleven hundred right, guys. I'll see you. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Joe. Joe. Eleven hundred and twenty feet. Oh. So. How big was the one that hit Arizona? Uh, I think it was about a half mile, wasn't it? No, nah, it wasn't that big. Uh, that's what the size of the crater was. The, the the mission, the the, uh, the thing there. Anyway, they think it's going to hit in the ocean. They're going to hit in the Pacific Ocean or whatever like it if it hits with Cretan tsunamis or whatever. Just so I throw it out there and anybody's that are curious about the uh, more uh, astrophysical type things. But uh, anyways, uh, Friday, April 13th, 2029. Okay, uh, you, you remind us in about eight uh, years. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need all my social security money before uh, it hits. Well, let's add it up. Nine years and see how many uh, months. Have. Yeah, you'll do okay. You'll do okay. <laughs> you know, some of us are just hoping to make it to April 8th, 2024. When the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, right. I still say we ought to charter yeah, an airplane. Next person, then we'll worry about asteroids. <laughs> yeah. I still say we can charter an airplane, fly above the skies of Fort Wayne there, and uh, take that. And I guess, uh, was it yesterday or two days ago now, the one down in uh, Chile and uh, Argentina was a bust. It was mostly overcast skies. So they got 
a few photos of people taking uh, through the thin clouds, but it wasn't no great event. It was only a little over one minute uh, totality. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one in 2024. Yeah. I, have I have relatives that live down in Richmond, Indiana. They have four minutes of totality. But clouds, April 8th or April 10th, whatever it is. Yeah. How about the next, next Monday? Yeah. Would you I'm still that? saying South Texas is your best bet. Yeah. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. See you all next year. Yeah. Uh, okay. Bye. All right, Merry Christmas. Well, I Larry, think you you've been quiet, Larry, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, and we'll see you. I'm going to check out. Okay, well, I'm getting ready to leave. Some of us have to work in the morning, so work. Happy holidays to the rest of you. All right, good seeing you, Larry. Merry Christmas, Larry. See you, Larry. I think, I, I think I'm going to close the meeting. Anybody who wants to stay and rag you or whatever. Uh, can carry on and uh, it was a great meeting and uh, let's wish for a better year that's all I can say so yeah. good night everybody when uh, yeah. I'm so, good too. Yeah, so. Right. bye bye guys yeah. bye sir congrats bye. Thank you Phil. Bye. Good good night. Night. thank you nice, everybody bye I'm gonna take off I gotta feed the reindeer See you later.